And Moses took the bones of Joseph with him. For, he, for Joseph had straightly sworn the children of Israel, saying, God will surely visit you, and you shall carry up my bones away hence with you. Let's start in verse 4. Verse 4. And he must, Jesus said, I must need to go through Samaria. Verse 5, then he came to the city of Samaria, which is called Sychar, near to the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Hmm. Now Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being wearied with his journey, sat thus on the well, and it was about the sixth hour. And he seated as you clap your hands and shake the person next to you. Amen. Tell them, do not leave your bones. Do not leave your bones in Egypt. We are products of our heredity in our environment. At least that's what the scientists, psychologists, and uh, sociologists say. Sabi ng mga scientifico, mga experto, mga kapatid na sa psychology and sa science, uh, they say that uh, tayo daw po ay produkto ng kung saan tayo lumaki at kung ano po ang ating uh, lugar na pinagpanganakan, mga kapatid. And so, if we will follow that same uh, 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 line of thinking, uh, then we will understand that uh, uh, mahirap, pag pinanganak sa mahirap, ay manatili mahirap ang uh, magnanakaw na pinanganak sa pamilyang magnanakaw o sa lugar ng puro magnanakaw ay maging magnanakaw din. But the Word of God makes to differ from that because we are not products of our environment, our culture, or our background. Shall you say Amen? Because if that were true, kung totoo na tayo may produkto, batay sa ating kong ginagalawang uh, uh, environment, mga kapatid, dapat sana hindi na naging satanas si Lucifer. You know, because Lucifer became Satan in a heavenly and perfect environment. You can be in a heavenly environment, pero kung satanas ka talaga, satanas ka talaga. Pwede mo ilagay ang baboy sa kalasyo, pero ang baboy, babalik sa puti. Amen. Who we are is not determined by where we are. Where you are does not determine who you are. Shall you say, so one of my favorite characters in the Bible is Joseph, because uh, Joseph interests me a lot. And you hear me, uh, preach a lot about the life of Joseph and, and uh, paano kumilos ang Panginoon sa kanyang buhay, mga kapatid. Shall you say, praise the Lord. Uh, Would you just uh, go on this trip with me on the life of Joseph and we will see why he said whatever you do, when you leave this place, hindi nang iiwan ang buto ko dito sa lugar na ito ang sabi niya, mga kapatid. Amen. Diba, Joseph was born into a messed up family. Maraming problema ang kanyang pamilya. Mga Joseph was born and because he was born at the old age of Jacob and Rachel, when she bore uh, Joseph, pinangalanan niya ito, mga kapatid, na Joseph, which means God will do it again. That means, now that my womb is open, I believe that this will not be my last child, but God will bless me again with another one. And that is true. Uh, Benjamin came out. And so, because of that, uh, Joseph became the favorite of his father. Uh, we know that uh, the invention of both of many colors and the favor of the father is with him. And, but uh, he was in a very messed up situation. Uh, which is supposed to carry the body the name Reuben. Uh, the Bible said Reuben openly and publicly slept with his father's uh, concubines, you know, and uh, 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 dishonoring the house of his father. And uh, so from that moment on, uh, Jacob, uh, it, uh, the Bible said, in order to begin with the sight of the Lord, Jacob, and he determined that Reuben will not inherit the family fortune, kahit na siya may panganay mga kapatid. And so, uh, since they saw Joseph as the favorite one, everybody thought, lahat ng brothers, uh, naisip nila na kay Joseph, iiwan ang lahat. And so they hated him. Amen. And he was in an environment that did not believe his dreams. May tawag ang Diyos sa kanyang buhay. He knows he was special. And the people around him couldn't handle him because everyone thought of inheriting their father's sheep and gold and oxen and yung kanyang uh, mana, mga kapatid, ang kanilang iniisip. But Joseph was occupied with other things. Joseph was more occupied 
with inheriting God's agenda for generations to come. While they were dreaming about gold and sheep and tents and oxen and, and talents and treasure, Joseph was dreaming about what God's plans is, amen, for the coming generations, amen. Ano ba agenda ng Panginoon in the spiritual? So, he did not understand Joseph. He, he was somebody who was very special. And so, we know the story. They put him in a pen and sold him into Egypt. But then again, when na, na si Joseph ay dilagay sa environment na ng Egypt, which is a corrupt system, even in Potiphar's house, even na sa pisinitus na nga nga in private, he still would not do in private what his brother Reuben did in public because Joseph kept his character. Amen. Joseph is saying, I live in an environment like this, but I don't have to do what they do. Sabi nila, well, in Rome, do what the Romans do. But Joseph knew that he was not an Egyptian. He was in Egypt. He was serving in Egypt, but he will not remain in Egypt. He knows he's going somewhere, and he niya babahiran ang kanyang eternal destiny because of a temporary pleasure. And so Joseph goes to prison. But even in prison, he alapsya sa iba mga kapatid. He was in prison, but he was not a prisoner. Siya po'y nasa kulungan, pero hindi po siya nakulong. Siya po'y napalitiran ng mga kriminal, mga kapatid, but he was blameless and he was pure before God. He kept his integrity. He kept his character and he kept his faith because he knew that God gave him a dream and he knew that the dream is not just the dream giver, but he's also the dream maker, and he's the dream finisher. And when God gives you a dream and a vision, God will make it, God will come to pass, it will happen according to the faithfulness of him that promised. And so when Joseph became a part of the royalty, he could have embraced the life of the Pharaoh. He could have embraced the life of a royal person, ng isang, ng isang prinsipe, mga kapatid, because Pharaoh even told him that whatever you want, gawin mo sapagkat uh, you have my full trust and confidence at ikaw ang, 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 ang ruler ng buong Egypt, pangalawa ng sa akin, the Pharaoh said, and everything is at your disposal. Amen. Pharaoh kept the ceremonial position, but whatever Joseph said, even the Pharaoh obeyed. Who's the boss now? Sabi ni Pero, ano, may nangyari pa nang hindi pa nangyari ha? Pitong, pa, pa, pitong uh, matatabang bata, pagkatapos ng pitong bata, na nakain ang pitong payat na bata, inahin, ano ba kung ibig sabihin nun? Pero, ganito yan, ganito gagawin mo. Sabi ni Pero, ang ganda ng idea niyan, sige, gabi ko. Pero, was not in a position, but in fact, uh, uh, Joseph was the ruler. He was the leader of the entire known world at that time. Everything was at his hands, at his disposal, or the treasure, or the gold and silver of Egypt was in his hands. And in those days, ang buhay ng mga pero, mga kapatid, the moment na isang pero ay maupo sa posisyon, the first thing that he'll do is to build his tomb. Amen. Ang unang bagay na gagawin ng isang paraon o ng isang prinsipe, mga kapatid, matapos siya matiklang ang prinsipe, ang kanyang gagawin agad ay ang pyramid. Because the ancient Egyptians believed that in the afterlife, they would continue the kind of lifestyle that they live here. And so, para sila'y mabuhay ng walang hanggang na marangya, buhay mo sila, ginagawa na nila ang kanilang bahay na marangya at napakalami. And the Pharaohs, amen, are more preoccupied about, about uh, having, their, uh, having their tomb in the valley of the kings. Buhay pa sila, meron pa silang plot sa libingan ng mga bayan. Because they are very concerned that their name will not be forgotten in history. Shall you say amen? And that they will become great in the sight of men. Their whole life is occupied sa pagtatayo ng mga monumento, mga kapatid, na nakapangalan sa kanila, mga syudad, mga obelis, mga pyramid, mga sphinx, mga kapatid. Mga mukha ng nyo, tapos katawan, kabayo, mga kapatid. And they name that after themselves. And they build big 
houses and, and big buildings, amen, and, and big cities according to their name, so that they will not be forgotten and they will be considered as a great person. And when they die, ang lahat ng kanila pong kayamanan, mga kapatid, including all their servants, has to die and go with them into the pyramid. Because they're so afraid that in the afterlife, they will not have any servants. At wala silang gagas po si mga kapatid because they have no food. But Joseph was not interested in having a pyramid named after him or become a famous mommy. Mga ikutan, mga kings, mga kapatid, ginagawa ang mommy, mga kapatid. Hindi yung mommy na noodles na kain. Yung mommy na nakabalot ng tissue paper, mga kapatid, di ba? Joseph was not interested to become a mommy. Instead of building a pyramid for, for his honor, he wanted to live in the house of David. Sapagkat naunawaan niya, mga kapatid, at alam niya na ang Diyos ay nangako sa kanyang lolo sa tulog na si Abraham that although they will sojourn and stay in the land of Egypt and although they will serve there, but time will come that God will visit them. Amen. Hallelujah. And God will take them out of that place because no matter how good Joseph was only interested and focused in the master. Amen. Joseph 
should know that one day there is going to be a great resurrection dahil ang pahakan ng Panginoon and his bones will not remain bones and he does not want to rise out of Egypt he wants to rise out hallelujah of the travel amen of the, in the midst of the congregation of the brethren of the children of God and he did not want to miss the greatest day of his future future he lived his life in the sunrise of eternity and ayaw niya malupok mga kapatid in the sunset of time Joseph was interested in being a part of what God was doing in the earth. And he said, Hallelujah, I know that when God takes you out of this place, that God will take you into a magnificent journey and you will be an adventure of a lifetime. I know that God is going to take you away from this place and He will show you His great marvels and His wondrous works and miracles that you have never seen. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. I know, Hallelujah, Joseph said, Remember, 
that these people have been slaves for 430 years. They have the slave mentality. They have the slave mindset. And they, their, their self-esteem, and napakababa nga kabalik. And they, they feel that they can do anything. They're not strong enough. And so, Moses said, we cannot begin a new nation with about 2 million people. I cannot bring these people out of Egypt without a kingdom structure. So Moses said, I need the bones of Joseph. Not just the bones, but what it represents. A symbol of the kingdom that must be implemented. We need the framework of Joseph if we are to make it in this journey. We need to have the spirit of Joseph. We need to have the right foundation if we are to make it through this journey called life. Christ being the head, being the cornerstone, and the church built upon the foundation of the apostles and the prophets. Shall you say amen? amen. I'm going to go really very fast. So, uh, you have to pay attention. And so, Moses assigned a certain amount, a certain number of people na ang tanging assignment nila mga kapatid, kahit saan tayo pumunta, bilit-bitin ninyo ang mga boto na yan. Wala pa yung ibang assignment. Whatever happens, kahit may sumugod na kaaway, you will not abandon these, these bones wherever you go, pagtulog ninyo, dito kayo hihigilan. I want these bones taken care of. Not for the bones, but, but, but by the spirit of the bones. Because that bones is a symbol of something in the kingdom of God. And so, people were assigned to carry the bones and keep the structure. And Moses said, whatever happens, do not leave the structure. Whatever happens, follow the plan. Follow the structure. Follow the framework. Follow the foundation. Do not deviate from the structure. Because we will not follow an Egyptian structure. We will not follow an Amalekite or a Philistine structure or a Hebrew or a Amorite system. We will keep the structure of chosen. What chosen believe in, we will continue in the faith of chosen. We will not use the system of Egypt. We will not use the system of the world the mission, we will keep the structure of the kingdom. We will continue to uphold Jesus in that vision. We will continue to preach the blood of Christ. We will continue to preach and uphold holiness. We will say no to divorce. We will say no to abortion. We will say no to homosexual marriage. We need to keep the structure of the kingdom. We don't need the structure of Egypt in order to make it to the journey. <laughs> ang sistema ng dadali, dali na natin ang espiritu ni Joseph. Na bagaman napunta sa pit, napunta sa prison, napunta sa Potiphar's house, maging sa palasyo, napunta. But he kept his character. He kept his integrity. He kept his faith in God. Tinala nila ang basket ni Joseph, mga kapatid, out of Egypt, and aalbidan na few moments. Can I preach for five more minutes? And another five minutes after that. Can you say amen? Yeah. And so, kinala nila yung casket ni Joseph, mga kapatid, palabas sa Egypt. And through the Red Sea, ipipipit nila yun, mga kapatid. Hindi ko alam kung nasa urn ba yun, o hindi ko alam ba ang pipit nila. Pero sa akin, maraming tao nagdala. So, it must be a coffin. It must be a... Kabaong siya, mga kapatid. Can you imagine that? Nung nagreklamo si Kurema, isang Red Sea, Joseph, ang gumagalaw sa kanyang grave, mga kapatid. Ano ba kayo ang reklamo? Kaya nung reklamo, kasama nila na ako. Binigpit niyo ang aking mga buto, pero hindi niyo natutunan ang lesson ng aking buto. The Bible said, through the wilderness, pitpit nila yun, mga kapatid. Pitpit nila yun. For 40 years, pinigpit nila yun. And the, this is what, ito po napakaganda, mga kapatid. Joshua 24 verse 32 gives us a glimpse again kung saan napunta ang bonus ni Joseph. After 30 years na nasakop nila ang promise na at nakatawid sila sa kabila ng Jordan River. 500 years plus 40 years. 
sa wilderness. Plus 30 years in the promised land, this is now 570 years after. Because the kingdom structure will work anytime, anywhere. The kingdom structure, faith will outlast anything. Faith will go through and transcend time and generations and fashion and facts. Hindi na ko gusto yung ganyan. Hindi na ko gusto yung mga pagbo. Hindi na ko gusto yung ganyan. Magpupuri maingat. Hindi na ko gusto yung pagbibigay. But faith will outlast anything. The kingdom structure will work 570 years after. After 570 years, they finally buried those bones. The Bible said it in Shechem. Listen to this. The bones were buried in Shechem. May napansin ba kayo? Where was Moses during this time? Si Moses, namatay na sa Mount Nebo. Iig na lang yung promise na hindi na kapasok. But Joseph's bones were behind. Joseph's bones went before the road the Jordan River. He crossed the Jordan River. And he was in the promised land. Pero patay na siya, Pastor. Precisely. Even in his death. Hallelujah. Joseph inherited the promise that Moses could not inherit in his lifetime. Joshua and Caleb entered Canaan with Joseph's bones. <laughs> we need to remember the unbreakable promises of God. We need to hold on to our faith. Nah, 
patay, ito na yung damit, kinain na si Joseph ng wild animal. Patay na yung paborito ng anak. The Bible said, when Jacob returned to Shechem, he pitched a tent in Shechem, put an altar, and bought the land. 570 years later, Moses knew where the land was, and when they were in the promised land, they returned to Shechem and buried the same bones in the land where she, where Jacob put the bones. And in this place, we knew that Jacob put an altar and Jacob the Lord in honor of the spirit and the bones of Joseph. This is the only mention in scripture about Jacob's way. It is so unheard of that even God are saying there was a typographical error. But the Bible is never wrong. Jacob that oil because he knew somehow in a prophetic in, in his vision that when the Israelites will go out of Egypt Joseph would come home to Shechem and his bones would be there. Fast back to the New Testament Jesus said before I build the church I have to go to Samaria because if there is a structure there there is a spirit there that I need to take which is the foundation of the New Testament church. The spirit of Joseph, which says, I will not be an Egyptian, I will not stay here, I will not be stay, I will not be comfortable in the world, because I am going to a place where God is the maker. So let's take a few more moments. Now, Jesus sits on a well, a woman comes, a Samaritan. Ang Samaritan ay kalahating gudyo, kalahating hintin, which is a perfect picture of the church. Because in the church, there will no more be Jew nor Gentile. And the Bible said, he was, she went on the sixth hour of the day. Six being the number of men. He came on the sixth hour. Because on the seventh hour, the hour of God is going to be completed. Nakisama ka sa limang asawa, but did not have fruit, wala silang anak. Because this Jew and Gentile, a picture of the church, went through five dispensations, but was not completed. Now, nasa pang-anim siyang asawa, na hindi siya kasal. Because on the sixth dispensation is grace, but grace was not yet given. So she can be married to grace, but God gave her a glimpse of grace. Because Jesus said, don't worry, a new generation is coming. He told the woman, when you will neither worship God in Mount Gerizim or in Mount Zion, but there is coming a time when the true worshippers shall worship me in spirit and in truth. And where the bones of Joseph were. And Jesus drew water from the structure of the spirit of Joseph. Because Jesus was saying, I am about to build my church. And this church is going to be a powerful church. But I want my church to have the kind of mentality, the kind of mindset, the kind of character. Amen of Joseph that they will worship me in spirit and in truth. That they will not change the system of the kingdom. That they will not defile themselves with the attitude of the world. And that they will keep the faith and they will keep the structure of the kingdom of God. Joseph, hallelujah, is one of the foundation. The structure of the kingdom is built upon the faith of one man. Six thousand years before. Because faith. Without last anything, but don't need your own 